seeks to protect women from sexual harassment at the workplace and creates a mechanism for the redressal of complaints. Though law has been passed, how do we ensure that women feel safe and are comfortable at the workplace? How do we change mindsets and get men to respect women? In this connection, it's important to have many more women at work and in positions of power and decision making. This will naturally take some time, but in the immediate future, it is for men to appreciate the work women do and not discriminate against them for promotions. It is often said that men are promoted for their potential, but women are prom promoted only on the basis of work done. It's also necessary to ensure that women get equal pay for equal work. Apart from this, it is essential to make sure that there are proper toilets for women and creches for children at the workplace. Most women combine work and family, and somehow it is taken for granted that women are solely responsible for taking care of the children and the household. Men must share this responsibility Otherwise, working women have a dual burden to carry. While trying to balance a successful career and a good family life, I remember my own sense of guilt when a friend of mine told me what my young son Vikram had said when she chatted with him. She said she had stated, it must be wonderful to have such an intelligent mother. And he retorted, I do not care how intelligent she is. She is never here when I want her. It made me introspect, and I wondered whether I should give up my legal profession. Was I failing my children? I wondered how to find more time. I had prided myself on giving as much concentrated and attentive time to him as I could, and especially on inculcating in him my love of English language and literature. But obviously that wasn't enough. Something was lacking. How was I to create that fine balance between my career, my obligations as a wife, and my duties as a mother, so that none suffered. Should I give up my legal work? The answer to my doubts appeared soon after. One day, when Vikram and I were having a serious conversation about poverty and its problems in and around Patna, he turned to me and said, Mama, I'm so glad that you work and use your mind and don't talk to me only about the price of onions and the stupidity of servants. <clears throat> Men have to be more supportive of women and give them space to grow and develop their potential and self-worth. I endorse what has been stated in Cheryl Sandel's book, Lean In. A truly equal world would be one where women ra ran half our countries and companies and men ran half our homes. <clears throat> Some women have to work because of financial necessity, some because they want a better standard of living, and some because it gives them a sense of independent identity. But there are many who would rather stay at home and take care of the family, to each her own way. But it's important to have the education and skill in case she wants a career at a later stage in life. One must have the freedom to choose and the right to excel to do what one chooses, needs. According to me, every woman is a working woman. The poorer woman who lives in rural society often has to walk miles to get water and firewood. In an urban setup, she is often the first to rise and get the children ready for school and cook the food to be eaten or taken by them and her husband to school or work. She has to wash the clothes and keep the place clean, and do numerous domestic chores, and be ready to take care of and feed her family when they return. She often has to take care of a small baby and look after an elderly relative as well. She's not paid anything for her hard work, and often it is not even acknowledged as work by her family and others, nor is she helped by her menfolk. That is why she says deprecatingly, I am just a housewife. Women are constantly being told that their only role is that of a wife and mother and that they are not fit for certain professions. This is not true. 
They can at the same time be a wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter, and a professional woman, and succeed in each of these roles. In a sense, every woman is a working woman and holds up half the sky. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, Honorable Justice uh, Leela Seth, Professor Chandrakala Padia, Chairperson in the Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla, Professor Chetan Singh, Director in the Institute of Advanced Studies, Fellows of the Institute, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's great privilege and honor for me to propose formal vote of thanks to the dignitaries of this program. At the outset, I express my deep sense of gratitude to Justice Lila Sethi for accepting our invitation and sparing her valuable time to deliver the 20th Radha Krishnan Memorial Lecture of the Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla. <laughs> On behalf of IIAS, I extend my sincere thanks to the Madam for her excellent inaugural address. Thank you, Madam. I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Professor Chandrakala Fahadiya, Chairperson, Governing Board, IIAS, for delivering presidential address. We are extremely grateful to you, Madam, for your constant support, encouragement in day-to-day -day activities of the Institute, and particularly organizing such event at, uh, by the IAS in Shimla. I express my gratitude to Professor Chetan Singh, director of the Institute, for his guidance. He always encouraged us to do the right thing at the right time. Let me put on the record our sincere thanks to the director for his support, guidance, encouragement for organizing such events. I also wish to thank all the fellows, former fellows, governing body members, society members, finance committee members of the Institute for their constant support to the Institute and for their gracious presence in this August gathering. Last but not the least, let me express my thanks and appreciation to all my colleagues at the Institute for their continuous effort for organizing such event. And they put a lot of efforts from the behind the curtain to make this event grand success. I thank you very much. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Uh, before uh, we dispose the lecture, is, uh, a copy of the lecture is available for everyone who wants to pick it up. You are free to pick it up. Uh, it's outside. We just don't want people shuffling papers. Uh, while the speaker was speaking. Thank you very much once again for coming. And thank you for uh, all those who are not even associated with the Institute in any manner for coming and listening. Uh, it's a privilege to have you here. And uh, maybe the next lecture again, we'll see you next year. Thank you.